Maria Zolin's husband is among nearly 67,000 Brazilians who have lost their lives to COVID-19. Inconsolable over his death, she blames President Jair Bolsonaro. The president isn't worried. No, he isn't worried because he has good doctors. He has a good hospital. He has medicine. He has money. The only thing I have to console me now is God. I don't have my husband anymore. I don't have anyone with me any longer. I just have God. Bolsonaro has been dismissive of the pandemic, even as COVID-19 has infected 1.7 million people in his country. He's pressured local governments to end lockdowns and blocked a law to make face masks mandatory. Now he's caught the disease, but critics say he's being as cavalier as ever. He took off his face mask while talking to reporters about his test results and says he's using a malaria medicine that hasn't been found to work against COVID-19. We know that there are other things that can help battle coronavirus, and we know none has been scientifically proven, but it's working for me. I trust in hydroxychloroquine. While Bolsonaro leads the charge against lockdowns and quarantines in Brazil, government officials elsewhere are facing pressure to ensure social distancing or step down. New Zealand's health minister resigned last week after some people defied orders to self-isolate. And one of Australia's largest cities, Melbourne, is in lockdown once again after a surge in infections there. The World Health Organization is also calling on governments to double down on efforts to contain the pandemic. It took 12 weeks for the world to reach 400,000 cases of COVID. Over the weekend, there were more than 400,000 cases across the globe. The outbreak is accelerating and we have clearly not reached the peak of the pandemic. Meanwhile, higher testing and more attention to social distancing is helping to slow down the spread in the worst affected Nordic country. More than 73,000 people have been infected in Sweden. It initially attempted to achieve herd immunity against the coronavirus and imposed few restrictions. Authorities reversed course in June and on Tuesday they reported the lowest number of new cases in three months. Experts say that's a lesson for countries like Brazil where the disease is still raging on. A lesson to take precautions before millions more people fall sick. Mubi Nasser, TRT World. Well, for more on this, Remy Piet joins us now from Miami, Florida. He's Senior Director at America's Market Intelligence. Welcome back to Money Talks, Remy. Can I start with Brazil? Now, as we heard there, President Jair Bolsonaro has shrugged off his own COVID-19 diagnosis in a country where more than 66,000 people have died and at least 1.6 million people have been infected by coronavirus. Should Bolsonaro be blamed for the worsening outbreak in his country? Well, blaming Bolsonaro just, you know, just gives part of the of, of story here. I mean, there's, there's been obviously different uh, approach to the coronavirus around the world and none has been, you know, as, as obvious as throughout the Americas, uh, especially with Brazil and the United States, you know, downgrading the, 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 the level of threat, uh, claiming that coronavirus was not, you know, that dangerous. And as a result, because of, of decision not wanting to, uh, to reduce, uh, to, to, to push for confinement, uh, as a result, the, the pandemic has spread throughout the country. It's the case in Brazil, it's the case in the U.S., somewhat the case in Mexico also, although I would not be as, uh, as harsh on, on AMLO as, as we could be on, on Bolsonaro in terms of his policies. But obviously here the concern was much more of, you know, claiming it was just going to be a short-term issue and, and, and favoring the, the economy and probably the elites of the country that can protect themselves against the virus and seeing, you know, the most poorest part of the, of the country being much more impacted by the virus itself. Yes, and we did see there in Mobin's stories uh, scenes of mass graves being dug up across Brazil and one of the frustrated uh, victims, uh, relatives there, saying that it's fine for Brazil's wealthy who can take care of their own health, but for the rest of the population, it's a different story. So how bad is that difference between those who do have the means to access uh, good health care and those who don't? 
Well, it's pretty simple. I mean, if you if you live in a in a, in a large finca or a large house, let's say, uh, you will less likely be be uh, contaminated if you actually work in a in a in a shanty town in in Rio de Janeiro where it's not possible to to respect social social distancing. So, I mean, in, in that case. The other countries, you know, Colombia, Peru, Chile, have taken much more, you know, measures in the Americas to try to limit the contamination uh, between population. In countries where you do not see this uh, this effort from from the uh, the head of the state, in Brazil being the main one, you do see the impact on the poorest uh, population. Those that have to go and work, those that have no other option that you know to go and 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 in the city to try to get you know food for their family after a couple of days, there's no more food in, in on the table. For the most wealthy, I mean, we could just like pack in the fridge and just go once every two weeks to the to the grocery store with a, a lot of measures. That's not a luxury that most population in Brazil, in Latin America, even in the U.S. actually have. So that that that's the impact that it has for those you know decisions that were uh, short sighted from Bolsonaro for Trump in the U.S. and just really just favored just a, a part of the electorate. Now, as you mentioned, Bolsonaro refused to support lockdown measures for fear of the impact they would have on the economy. But could Brazil's economy suffer even more now that it really doesn't have a control on the coronavirus there? Now, first of all, we have to be very cautious in the fact that, you know, even the spread inside Brazil is not equal in all states and provinces of Brazil. So if you want to make a, a business decision, an investment that is actually geared on a project, you need to be able to understand the situation in that specific province. Will it have, you know, uh, impact on the overall economy? Definitely. I mean, there was a large sacrifice that countries made, you know, confining their, their population to try to limit the spread of the virus in Western Europe, in the Andean countries, in the, in, the, in the Americas, that will allow potentially those economies to relaunch, you know, much faster and, and be able to be more, much more immune to a second wave of the virus. This is not the case in the US, it's not the case in Brazil, it's probably not the case in, in, in Mexico. Well, you continue having the outbreak of, of a series of clusters in different parts of the countries, and, and there's no control over this pandemic. And, and the long-term costs on the economy, on, on the security for foreign investors, on the capacity of you know, uh, you know, domestic workers to go on and, 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 and back to work and, and, and develop the, the economy, obviously would be played by the incapacity of, of cleaning the mess uh, in, in the short run by taking the strong measure and sacrifice that unfortunately Bolsonaro, Trump, or even AMLO to a certain extent were not ready to take because they just bet on short-sighted views and their own personal and political interests. Okay, Remy Piet from America's Market Intelligence, thank you again for joining us on the program.